this didn't come up directly last night. At least I don't think it did in the podcast. It isn't in the quotes that Sirius XM sends out every Monday night, which is useful. Makes it easier for me. I don't have to go spend 45 minutes listening to a podcast that I'd otherwise not really be inclined to listen to. But how are they not giving him the side eye on Sunday when he's F-bombing them, when he checked out Friday night and didn't show up for meetings and walk through practice on Saturday morning. And I know Todd Bowles said yesterday, oh, he was he he didn't miss anything. Well, he did. You 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 scheduled those events for a reason, a walk through on Saturday morning and meetings on Saturday morning. And he's not there. I mean, if your quarterback's not there, I think it at some level undermines his authority to drop f bombs on the guys who were there. How does it not? Well, I, I understand, but I do think this is a case first off. But, you know, Tom Brady said it right in a lot of ways. You know, he, he's got a great relationship and rapport with people. He's a great leader. You know, I'm sure he says a lot of positive things. That was a time where things weren't looking good. He was trying to do anything he could to kind of, you know, jumpstart the football team, give him an edge. And I'm not going to be mad at him for that. Is it weird? I mean, it's all weird. The whole year's been weird. 11-day absence in training camp, Friday flight, party, miss Saturday, walk through, all that. Yes, it's weird, especially from a guy like Tom Brady, who we know is all in all the time. And we've had two moments this year where we'd go, wait, that doesn't seem all in. But, you know, it also is Tom Brady. And even though, you know, you would think most cases, yes, you do give him the side eye, Mike, to your point. Here's one where this guy, where he's got enough pelts on the horse or the wall or wherever the hell you want to put it, to go, eh, it's okay. It, it, it is okay, even though it's we're not accustomed to it. Like, he's he's earned the right to be where he's at right now, at least for my money, and, and talk and, and do some of the things that he's done. Uh, but it is strange, nonetheless. Big picture, he's earned the right. But when you get into the week in and week out grind yeah. of the football season, mm -hmm. that all falls away. And that's where it kind of came up the head. Kevin Durant on the podcast, and Tom Brady started talking about the commitment that you have to make for football season. It's like being deployed overseas in the military. You're just gone, and you try to find this balance. And he was dangerously close to mentioning, for example, this weekend I struck the balance by telling my team, I'll see you in Pittsburgh have fun at practice on Saturday morning when you'd rather be sleeping or sitting in meetings when you'd rather be watching TV with your family or hanging out or just being home or being anywhere but at work. I'll be in New York City. Have a good time. Like, I, and, and this gets back to Miles Simmons said this yesterday. He said it all in the statement that was issued when he retired on February 1. He can no longer make the full commitment. Fine. You can't make the full commitment. Well, he's back. And he still can't make the full commitment. And and at some point, at some point, it's not going to matter that he's got enough pelts for the horse and the wall and the roof and the basement. It's not going to matter. What matters is this team this year, these Buccaneers, are they doing enough to win games to justify everything they put into it? And at some point, they are going to give him the side eye. At some point, he's not going to have the authority that he ordinarily would have had. And I think that's the key. He's right. The quarterback's the one who has to do this, but the quarterback's got to be there. You got to be there for everything to have that voice that really carries and resonates with your teammates. Well, it, it, yes. You know, I don't think we're at that point yet. And, you know, to your point too, like, you know, when you're going to do that too, you got to play well. And again, it, it's, it's the whole offense is not playing well, but Brady's certainly not doing anything special either. You know, as we saw there yet yeah, in, in the game on, on Sunday, you know, there's a lot of pressure. He wasn't hit a ton. But he had people around him, and that's where just, you know, his age does show in games like that. He gets antsy. He gets jumpy. He can't see clearly down the field. He misses throws he shouldn't miss. You know, again, I don't even know, Mike, and I'm not – I'm just off the top of my head. I don't – did they sack him the other day in the game? If they did, it was Twice. one – two sacks. They did. They got two, two sacks. sacks. But it was a lot of like this where, yeah, he wasn't going to be able to sit there all day and bite, bake a cake, but like right there, that, that throw should be hit. I mean, okay, whoop de doo He had to step up in the pocket. The guy was an in-cut wide open. But because Brady was, you know, flinchy throughout the day, and everybody saw it. I mean, anybody that watched that game, I know here we were watching it in NBC. Everybody was going, man, Brady's having one of those days where he's, he's flinching and moving in the pocket, and there's nobody within six feet of him at times. And, you know, that's where if you have too many of those performances added up to the things you're talking about, Mike, that's where you're going to start to get the side eye. 
But I don't think we're there yet. I don't think we are because there's a lot of issues with their football team across the board, and that's where it's also weird that, yeah, he's not there because they, they need the extra leadership and the extra kick in the ass right now, and there is something missing. And for you know Brady not to be there on a Saturday walkthrough, I know it's not the biggest deal, but his energy and the things that he does bring to the table that are special – you know, that, that goes missed. I don't care what anybody says on a Saturday. To not have Brady there, I'm sure guys are like, hey, where's Tom? Where's Tom? Where's Tom? Where's Tom? Where's Tom? They don't know. And it doesn't have the same pizzazz and feel to it as it does when the starter's there, the leader of your team. So, you know, I, I hear what you're saying, Mike. Hey, it's certainly strange. And, it sends a message that we're going to Pittsburgh to check the box against a cream puff. They were favored by nine and a half points. Biggest upset of the year so far based upon point spread. It closed at nine and a half, and the Steelers won the game outright 20 to 18. So uh, complacency, taking the win for granted, whatever it may be, the, the timing just wasn't right. And I'd love to know the full story on Brady deciding he was going to go and and whether he was going to just fly back Friday night. When I saw he was at the Robert Kraft wedding in New York City on Friday, I just assumed when we'll it's take all the over, private plane. he gets back on the private right. plane, sleeps a little bit, watches film, does whatever, and and is there with the team on Saturday and then flies back to Pittsburgh with the team. I would have never dreamed that he was just going to stay in the area, not like it's in the area. It's still 400 miles away. So it, it, the whole thing was weird. Here's Todd Bowles from yesterday on the question of whether or not Tom Brady is getting special treatment. He works as hard as anybody. You know, special treatment. There's been a few guys that missed some meetings and some practices for some special thing that just doesn't get publicized because they're not him. So it kind of comes with the territory. You, you don't worry about it too much. Is he as locked in as he's been in the past with you? Yes. I would love to hear Bruce Arians on this topic. This is when I wish he was still the head coach because that was one of the big things that was eye-opening in 2020. Well, he gave no free he passes. Was, he was riding Tom Brady, exactly. blaming him for interceptions that weren't even his fault. Yeah, a, a ball that goes off the hands of a receiver and gets picked off, and he blamed it on Tom Brady. Got to play better. He, Can't throw that. Can't do that in that moment. Yeah, yeah, he was great. What, yeah. what, what, what? I mean, God, what would Arians be saying about this? And what would Arians say if Tom Brady came to him and said, hey, you know, Coach, I know we got meetings and walkthrough on Saturday morning, but – uh, I, I'm going to the owner's wedding. Oh, oh, uh, Glazer's getting married? No, not the owner of this team, the owner of the team I used to play for. I mean, what would Arians say to that? So uh, there's something missing there. Now, they're 3-3. Three and three. They got 11 games left. It's all in front of them. We'll see, we'll see if they can get it together. Remember, two years ago, they got it together coming out of their bye week. They were above 500, barely, 7-5 and five going into the bye, and then won four in a row on the back end back when it was 16 games. So they, they still maybe can get it together, but – it's just it gets back to what we were talking about last segment. The older quarterbacks are are falling apart before our eyes. Yeah, and well, uh, for seeing, different reasons and in different ways. Right, but right. but the golden age of quarterbacking is ending. Well, you're seeing that they need support systems, and, and you know, Mike, that's that's something you know, you and I, and you know, I have. I've tried to explain that to people. They're they're not capable of when the team is a little less than to make anything happen. It kind of has to be a certain formula for them to succeed, and that's to me where they're different than. You know, some of the young guns in the sport where they're like, well, I'm missing four all linemen. It doesn't matter. I'm Mahomes. I'm Allen. I'm Lamar. I'm Burrow. Burrow hasn't been protected one drop back past the whole season. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares because he makes it happen and makes plays and whatever. So, you know, that there there is a difference there. But yeah, the Brady thing and, and the Bucks, it's it, it definitely has hit the point a little bit of where, you know, you kept going, they'll get it turned around. They'll get it turned around to where you start to go, huh? I don't know. Maybe this is their current team. They're not very dominant and, and like, out hitting people and causing turnovers on the defensive side of the ball. Offensively, the all-line is not the same. Mike Evans looks like he's lost a half a step. Chris Godwin's not 100%. There's no Gronk. And the other receivers in Russell Gage and company, nobody's really jumped out yet. So that's where I go. I don't know. I just don't know if they're going to be able to turn it around. And, and Mike, hear me out with this thing, too, with the Bulls thing. Like, why not? I understand he's right. There's guys that probably missed meetings and all that. And, and, and you know, they're not Tom Brady, so nobody writes about it in the newspaper. But, like, why not just go, yeah, he does get special treatment. Uh, I, again, to a degree, he gets some things that the rest of us don't. He's earned that. That's fine. Most people in the locker room know that. I played on a team with 
guys like Rondé Barber and Derek Brooks and Warren Sapp. Did I think I was going to be able to get away with the same shit that they could get away with? Absolutely not. Yes, they got preferential treatment. You know, I think sometimes by by or trying to avoid that, you actually open up a can of words for us to talk about it more. Where if you just said, yeah, you know, he's been playing in this league for 22 years and he's got more Super Bowl rings than any of us and he works hard and, yep, Br Brady gets to break a rule every now and then compared to the rest of the football team. I don't think anybody would have had an issue. I don't know. Am I wrong by that? I agree with you completely yeah. because it hurts Todd Bowles' credibility it does. to not say what right. we all know. Right. Or just say, hey, look, this was the deal when he came back. We had to choose between Tom Brady trading for someone, drafting someone, Blaine Gabbert, <laughs> right, Kyle Trask. <laughs> <laughs> we had to make a choice. So if the choice is this is the only way we get Tom Brady and fill up the seats with asses and not empty red seats that everyone can see on the Fox broadcast of the game where nobody's here because they don't want to come see anybody but Tom Brady, we're going to do what we have to do to get Tom Brady. That's his deal. That's that's the deal. We did this deal. We weren't going to tell him no. We can't tell him no because we told him yes on his way back through the door when he had retired and couldn't get to Miami. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.